January 17th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Genesis chapter 31, from the Old Testament. Jacob heard that Laban's sons were complaining, Jacob has taken everything that belonged to our father. He has gotten rich at our father's expense. When Jacob saw the look on Laban's face, he could tell his attitude towards him had changed. The Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your relatives. I will be with you. So Jacob sent a message for Rachel and Leah to come to the field where his flocks were. Then he said to them, I can tell that your father's attitude towards me has changed, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I've worked for your father as hard as I could, but your father has humiliated me and changed my wages ten times. But God has not permitted him to do me any harm. If he said, the speckled animals will be your wage, then the entire flock gave birth to speckled offspring. But if he said, the streaked animals will be your wage, then the entire flock gave birth to streaked offspring. In this way, God has snatched away your father's livestock and given them to me. Once during breeding season, I saw in a dream that the male goats mating with the flock were streaked, speckled, and spotted. In the dream, the angel of God said to me, Jacob, here I am, I replied. Then he said, Observe that all the male goats mating with the flock are streaked, speckled, or spotted, for I have observed all that Laban has done to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the sacred stone and made a vow to me. Now leave this land immediately and return to your native land. Then Rachel and Leah replied to him, Do we still have any portion or inheritance in our father's house? Hasn't he treated us like foreigners? He not only sold us, but completely wasted the money paid for us. Surely all the wealth that God snatched away from our father belongs to us and to our children. So now do everything God has told you. So Jacob immediately put his children and his wives on the camels. He took away all the livestock he had acquired in paid in Aram and all his movable property that he had accumulated. Then he set out towards the land of Canaan to return to his father Isaac. When Laban had gone to shear his sheep, Rachel stole the household idols that belonged to her father. Jacob also deceived Laban the Armenian by not telling him that he was leaving. He left with all he owned. He quickly crossed the Euphrates River and headed for the hill country of Gilead. Three days later, Laban discovered Jacob had left, so he took his relatives with him and pursued Jacob for seven days. He caught up with him in the hill country of Gilead. Now God came to Laban the Armenian in a dream at night and warned him, Be careful that you neither bless nor curse Jacob. Laban overtook Jacob, and when Jacob pitched his tent in the hill country of Gilead, Laban and his relatives set up camp there too. What have you done? Laban demanded of Jacob. You've deceived me and carried away my daughters as if they were captives of war. Why did you run away secretly and deceive me? Why didn't you tell me so I could send you off with a celebration complete with singing, tambourines, and harps? You didn't even allow me to kiss my daughters and my grandchildren goodbye. You have acted foolishly. I have the power to do you harm, but the God of your father told me last night, be careful that you neither bless nor curse Jacob. Now I understand that you have gone away because you long desperately for your father's house, yet why did you steal my gods? I left secretly because I was afraid, Jacob replied to Laban. I thought you might take your daughters away from me by force. Whoever is taking your gods will be put to death. In the presence of our relatives, identify whatever is yours and take it. Now Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. So Laban entered Jacob's tent and Leah's tent and the tent of the two female servants, but he did not find the idols. Then he left Leah's tent and entered Rachel's. Now Rachel had taken the idols and put them inside her camel saddle and sat on them. 
Laban searched the whole tent, but did not find them. Rachel said to her father, Don't be angry, my lord. I cannot stand up in your presence because I am having my period. So he searched thoroughly, but did not find the idols. Jacob became angry and argued with Laban. What did I do wrong? He demanded of Laban. What sin of mine prompted you to chase after me in hot pursuit? When you searched through all my goods, did you find anything that belonged to you? Set it here before my relatives and yours, and let them settle the dispute between the two of us. I have been with you for the past 20 years. Your ewes and female goats have not miscarried, nor have I eaten rams from your flocks. Animals torn by wild beasts I never brought to you. I always absorbed the loss myself. You always made me pay for every missing animal, whether it was taken by day or at night. I was consumed by scorching heat during the day and by piercing cold at night, and I went without sleep. This was my lot for 20 years in your house. I worked like a slave for you 14 years for your two daughters and six years for your flocks, but you changed my wages 10 times. If the God of my father, the God of Abraham, the one whom Isaac fears, had not been with me, you would certainly have sent me away empty-handed. But God saw how I was oppressed and how hard I worked, and he rebuked you last night. Laban replied to Jacob, These women are my daughters, these children are my grandchildren, and these flocks are my flocks. All that you see belongs to me. But how can I harm these daughters of mine today, or the children to whom they have given birth? So now come, let's make a formal agreement, you and I, and it will be proof that we have made peace. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a memorial pillar. Then he said to his relatives, gather stones. So they brought stones and put them in a pile. They ate there by the pile of stones. Laban called it Jigar Seadatha, but Jacob called it Galiad. Laban said, this pile of stones is a witness of our agreement today. That is why it is called Galiad. It was also called Mizpah because he said, May the Lord watch between us when we are out of sight of one another. If you mistreat my daughters, or if you take wives besides my daughters, although no one else is with us, realize that God is witness to your actions. Here is this pile of stones and this pillar I have set up between me and you, Laban said to Jacob. This pile of stones and the pillar are reminders that I will not pass beyond this pile to come to harm you, and that you will not pass beyond this pile and this pillar to come to harm me. May the God of Abraham and the God of Nahar, the gods of their father, judge between us. Jacob took an oath by the gods whom his father Isaac feared. Then Jacob offered a sacrifice on the mountain and invited his relatives to eat the meal. They ate the meal and spent the night on the mountain. Early in the morning, Laban kissed his grandchildren and his daughters goodbye and blessed them. Then Laban left and returned home. God, today I ask for discernment and patience. I don't know if, if I was Jacob and Laban had come after me, if I would have been able to <laughs> stay as calm and collected as Jacob did and be so clear about everything. So God, today and the rest of the week, and the rest of my life, as people come into my life who have wronged me, who have deceived me, who make me frustrated, Yes, please allow me to be honest with them, but also allow me to have grace with them. Allow me to be fair with them. Allow me discernment to know that sometimes grace is more important than justice. That forgiveness is more important than my grudge or my ego. Allow me to follow, just as Jacob did, what you have commanded him to do. Allow me to follow what you command me to do. 
If you take something away from me or ask me to go someplace, allow my heart to not overcome what you've asked me to do. Allow my past to not be changed by my follies and my wishes. So today, God, I ask for discernment that as situations come into my life that in the world I live in of justice and superheroes with capes and right and wrongs, that I remember that you are the person, that you are my God of justice, who will right all the wrongs. But that's not up to me, that you'll take care of that. I am called by you to be truthful, grace-filled, and to forgive others. To love them with the heart that you love us with. Now, I'll, I'll never get to that point. <laughs> but do allow me every day to wake up and try to get closer to that God. To get closer to that love that you always talk about. Not just for the people who are easy to love, like the Rachels of our life, but for us to truly love the Labans of our life as well. Thank you for these amazing lessons, God. They're so powerful in our lives and allow us to see what it is exactly that we need to do and not do in our lives. You know, these stories are a couple thousand years old, some way older than that. Yet they so apply to our life today of how, how we act as humans and how we're actually called to ask, act as your children. Thank you. Thank you for your amazing word. Thank you for your guidance. And today I think I'm most faith, thankful for your patience. <laughs> At us fighting to want to be humans for some silly reason. And your desire to always call us to a higher standard to act like your children. We love you very much. In your son's name we pray. Amen.